Hi everyone, um, excited to talk to you again at Drupal South, um, especially excited to be here in Wellington. Um, G'day. Yep. And do we have any Kiwis in the room? Ah, yay! Okay. Kia ora ki te whanau, koi ronga ronga te moana, koi raukawa te moana, no whanganui a tāra ahoi, koi Ngāti Pākehā te iwi, koi Riri te tupuna, koi Iverine te waka, no Sharon ahoi. For those of you Australians in the room, that is uh, called a mihi, and it uh, says where I'm from, my mountain, my river, my waters, my city, my ancestors, how, I, how my ancestors came to New Zealand, and we use that to cross-reference with each other and, found, and find those one degrees of separation that we so often find in New Zealand. Um, so welcome, thank you all for coming to listen. Um, um, just before we jump ahead, I've realised an introductory slide about who the two of us are, so oh. I won't push next just yet. Um, as a quick introductory, for those of you who don't know us, I'm Alistair O'Neill, I'm the product of GovSeb. So I have a lot of customer calls, and just all around lots. Yep, and I'm Sharon Clarkson. I worked in the New Zealand government digital space for quite a long time, um, basically leading the transformation of inland revenue in the 2000s, and then went back to Australia after working at Linz and a couple of other agencies, went back to Australia and as part of leading a whole of government uh, branch in Australia, created GovCMS and have steered it ever since. Cool, so a bit of an introductory of what we're doing today. We're going to talk about, Sharon's going to talk about some stuff she brought up at uh, Drupal South in Brisbane, but also touches to some of the we're having with our community. Um, we're going to talk a bit of DXP, um, our thinking about the model there, some of the steps that are probably going to be involved there, in my mind about that, feel free. Uh, and of course, we're going to talk a couple of things around content, business, security, a couple of technical things as well. Yeah, questions for you as well, not just questions. But... So previously at Drupal South in Brisbane, um, we spoke about GovCMS now moving into its third major transformation phase. So our first was all about establishment, our second was all about changing our technical stack to Kubernetes. This really was a technical transformation. And now we're looking at um, implementing a whole range of transformative technologies, making them available to all the agencies that use GovCMS. Um, as part of that, uh, when I spoke to you last, we had just completed the first stage of a, a, a limited procurement that uh, where we did proof of concepts with a number of vendors. And we did that because government hasn't really had much opportunity to work with DXP and uh, personalization, uh, content sharing at scale. Um, and we needed to learn as much as our customer agencies need to learn. Our GovCMS team also didn't have a great deal of exposure. Um, we took those proof of concept and we worked um, closely with a number of vendors, we spent time with them every week. We spent, we did showcases, very long showcases, and then at the end, um, a very um, a large community showcase to all of the agencies on GovCMS. As part of that, we learned a lot of things, and we started to started to understand some of the issues that we're going to have to solve um, as doing this in government presents a few more um, issues to solve than just doing it out in the wild. Um, so this has shaped our thinking. Um, this talk today is going to have a box drawn around it because uh, as I indicated at Drupal South last year, we were then going to go and put in a uh, full DXP tender to market, which has happened. That tender has closed, it's currently in evaluation. So for that, purpose, and because I don't want to say anything that might mean I have to start again, um, we're going to be talking about functionality today. We're not going to be talking about vendors. We're not going to be talking about product at all. Stay away from those things. And if you ask me a question about them, I'm going to have to politely decline to answer. 
Okay, but I'm happy to talk about what are the challenges for us going forward into this new world? Um, what are things we're really having to think about? Um, where do we think we're going to start? Because I have to start preparing everybody because we have so many sites and customers. What we do has a ripple throughout the whole community, um, the Drupal community and the government community. So it's important I flag our intention. And just re reiterating a model that I put up on at uh, one of our GovCMS Mega Meets in 2019, um, this is how we see the world. Who owns the CMS, controls cost, controls the ability to innovate and to co-develop. And we are resolutely open source in, our, in the core of GovCMS, which is Drupal, will, will remain open source and, on, and our distribution um, developed by government. Obviously that's the big role for my department of finance and my team. We then have hosting partners that we choose every three to four years and they help us deliver that platform. We also have a DSP panel, Drupal Services panel, and uh, that's currently being refreshed. It went out to market last year and started around four years ago and that gives a lot of Drupal vendors um, an opportunity uh, to be part of a panel and it makes procurement a lot easier for agents. So it's a um, we have security services, so we buy some third party security services and our own team in finance does a lot of the security work behind the scenes. It's not just uh, something we buy. Um, we're held up in government as the gold standard for cyber defence, especially out on the cloud. It's something we've developed over 10 years, well before we even started GovCMS. And then lastly, this is what we've gone out to market for, to create a panel of DXP providers for all of our customers to use. So that's how we see the world. I suppose now looking back at the model, cause a terrible... Yes, yes I know, <laughs> sorry. Um, and of course, while we do a panel there, there are providers. Panel? People? Yeah. And there's also some other answers. Which tools they might use. Analytics. There's other things. Yeah, because it's worth um, just confirming that, that not only are the panels not mandatory, they're a service you can use if you're a government agency and it's useful to you. But the GovCMS is not mandated as a service to the Australian government, not even the Commonwealth. And that's something we've been quite staunch about um, and protected from being made mandatory. We want people to come to our service because it's good, not because they're directed. So broadly, when we talk DXP, we're talking about two broad uh, groups of capabilities. One, one side personalization, on the other side, ways of sharing and reusing um, pieces of content at its most broad uh, level. Um, today, we're going to be mostly concentrating on the second of these, on the content sharing. Uh, one of the reasons for that is, uh, is where our community is most mature and ready to go. Uh, Personalisation is going to take uh, a little more time and a little bit more learning and it's probably going to be something that I would say certain agencies are going to be more ready to move quickly than others. Um, whereas we're already all in the business of content and the principles that we already understand and know about delivering uh, websites and content can be reused. Um, we're not starting from nowhere. And I suppose importantly, when we think about that personalization, it is a very hot topic within our community. Uh, obviously, there's a, it's a hot topic just in general. Um, when I look out there and, and see the conversations that are happening, the biggest and most interesting one for those of you who maybe don't work a huge amount in the government space is everyone's keen to do something, provided someone's already done it before. Yeah, no one wants to be first in most instances. So that creates its own sort of challenge, separate to some of these other aspects. Cool. So, jumping into this sort of space where I see there's some really sort of obvious ones, and of course, I don't expect you to all be familiar with those products that are up there. Um, I am. I actually used to manage 
all of them as are. Um, these are all products that are served out of the Department of Finance, where we sit. <laughs> so, of course, when I consider some of these sort of obvious and easy starting points for sharing content, well, within an agency, it makes a lot of sense. You're delivering a product, but you're also delivering a lot of similar things in the same way that we can use toolkits, frameworks, and all of this sort of stuff to start with a common base. We can do the same thing with some of the content that serves out into a government site. Each one of these sites, Department of Finance, Finance Minister, Trade and Political Exchange Council and selling the governments all have a whole bunch of base bits of content information, copyright, disclaimers, all of that fun stuff that you already go and talk to a legal team about. Funnily enough, they usually look the same, if not very similar. So that to me, when we think about those, there's potentially some really obvious starting points where it's probably coming from a single site or a single source and being served out. Now, again, all of a sudden, because there's a lot of different lenses within finance and same with a lot of other agencies and customers, that's probably at least an obvious sort of ring fence of where things could start. Um, and of course, advantageously for all of those products there, I'd already moved them to GovCMS in previous life as a customer. So some theoretically really easy ones to do, don't need to jump out, don't need to deal with the politics of other locations or other agencies. It's theoretically easy to move on and control through process. Technology is the same, content's the same. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, then when I personally think of a next sort of step of extensions, I start to think of things that are common or very similar across other agencies. Um, we'll come back to that one at the top. But of course, when I think about some of this other messaging, we've got that one in black um, with our white text there. That's actually a message that appears on the GovCMS site. Now, again, we put that up there to sort of give a bit of confidence. Maybe something or something similar to that is a good one that could be shared out more broadly if people chose to use it. So then, of course, we're thinking of, okay, great, we've got a source. We could potentially push that out to other agencies, other products, things like that. And of course, the uh, latter two ones here, one in yellow and this teal one, we're talking about COVID. Funnily enough, that's been a big talking point recently. I'm not sure if you were aware. Um, and of course, another one, when we do federal election. Or we have other things in the change of government. Maybe we've got some generic messaging that applies to everyone. But of course, isn't necessarily pop in your mind when you get the whole election being called. And I'm not the same, try to have a slide. The one on top, previous trademark examiner here. So when I think about it, I start thinking of legislation and regulations and all the Latin terms. Things that come up with court cases. So that's when it gets really exciting. Um, so, of course, yes, legislation, things like business rules, those messages are controlled and are coming in from all places. When we sort of extend further and start thinking about what that looks like in the Ramwhite platform, um, I know the product we've got on there. Um, and of course, again, probably a gist of transference from somewhere to somewhere else. What's the source? What's the target? And then, of course, some question marks about controls that then sort of come in. Do I always want those messages to appear? Do I only want certain ones? When I think of it from a technology standpoint, that's probably actually the easier bit. It's more about when should these things happen? Who controls those things? How do we manage that? Technology is great. Technology already exists. It's the easier bit in my mind. Really is. Then, of course. <laughs> so I think the, um, what I'm really having to think about is how do I impart confidence in thousands of people that participate in GovCMS? To, to use these new tools and these new capabilities, starting with uh, what Alice has just outlined, um, will mean that they're working with things that are already very familiar and not very controversial. Um, and that'll be, I think, the first touch on whatever tool sets we have. Um, and that's designed to sort of break down the unknown new stuff fears and just let them concentrate on learning how to do it. The second step, and this is going to be the one that is going to be the most challenging, but it's starting from a topic-based content. And what I think we will do is start off with a couple of topics only 
and look at those topics right across government. Um, but keep it fairly contained in the beginning, so just one or two topics. Um, and we know that, to obviously choose a couple of topics that we know cross right over seven or eight different agencies. Responsibilities. When I talked uh, last year, I had an interesting dot point that a few people asked me about on one of my slides and it said, I said we were going to do DXP, we were going to do this, we are going to do that. And I had one that said, and deal with structural emissions that we are facing in government, the things that we don't have. And I think this is going to expose one of those structural, missing structural pieces um, very quickly. So it'll be one or two topics at a time, very limited. I'd, I'd like to involve as many people as possible in, in sort of micro sprints going, you know, probably virtual, um, so that as many people across government get a, a chance to um, experience this, to play with it a bit, uh, to experiment, uh, to build their skill, build their confidence. Um, so it is all about skilling up the community. And ways in which we might use this, um, these are, we've used New Zealand, <laughs> but Smart Traveller. Um, some information here from Smart Traveller and from Passports. And then of course that kind of content can be exported to business sites, um, other sites that are related to travel. Um, and then again to other sites like travel agents. And such where we want to where we want to get our government messages out to, so it doesn't stop at just government. I think we'll start with just sharing to government um, till we are a bit more proficient, and then we'll be looking at okay, where else in the on the internet are the people that we need to read these messages? Where are they? Where are they gathering on the internet? Because I don't necessarily think I'm going to wake up this morning and the first thing I must do is go to a government website. They might be looking at Qantas, they might be looking at uh, Flight Centre, might be reading a travel blog on stuff. We could be doing any of those things and we need to be thinking about where do our messages need to get. So it's about knowing your audience a lot better than we have um, to date. So with that sort of thinking, that's where we get a few more arrows and a few more boxes on our screen and we start thinking about outside of our platform. Now, of course, again, there's always that question of what is the source, what is the target, who is the owner of these things, who allows for this information to go across. Now, of course, that's great. There's a lot of thinking that needs to happen there. <clears throat> but as Sharon's just indicated, it makes a lot of sense if we can expose material and have it available where it's context, where it contextually makes sense. There's a small subset of people in this room that do go and visit a government website at the start of their day. That's usually because they work on that website. Um, that's not the sort of average person's experience. They're trying to find out the weather. They're trying to find, well, granted, weather is a government website like in Australia. Uh, <laughs> um, but people are looking at weather. They're looking for commute information. They're looking for potentially safety information, depending on certain circumstances, among other things, on top of just living life. So being able to then go, okay, well, we need to expose information from somewhere, feed it off to other things that are outside of our platform. We don't have it for everything. We're not mandated. And of course, if we're talking about being an open government and having transparency and sharing information, we should make that material subsequently available for where it makes sense for others. Now, that's fine. <laughs> and that, of course, otherwise means government, other government products that aren't on our platform, plenty of transactional tools that happen would need this sort of information. And then of course, there's plenty of products just out there publicly that could also benefit from this as well. Again, a lot of it's trying to find that context. Yeah, and that does sort of um, show up. that when you start to take content from multiple agencies that all have a view and a, and a, and a particular lens on a topic, um, we have to start thinking about topics from a whole of government perspective, not an agency perspective and thereby is the missing structure. In 2016, when I was at DTO, um, I wrote a series of blog posts about, uh, it was for a different purpose, but I had already written quite a lot about 
the fact that we have editorial control over the content we publish as an agency, but we do not have uh, editorial management of topic across government in Australia, Commonwealth. I don't know if that's the same for New Zealand, whether you've got further along on that path. Um, it's certainly we, we are at the beginnings in the, in the Commonwealth, Australia. Um, why does that matter? Well, you need editorial control over a topic if you're going to be able to take all these little pieces of information from different agencies and knit them together to tell a story or to take them apart and reform them with other pieces of content. Somebody needs to have an edit, their chief editor view on that topic. From a whole of government perspective, we don't have that structure. Uh, we don't have uh, even the beginnings of that structure being made. But one thing about GovCMS is it's such a large community now that if we decide to sort this out, um, we can just sort it and we can just get on and do it because we're a kind of doing kind of community. Um, and once they see the gap, if I know everybody will jump in and help to solve it. Similarly, some of these, these pieces of information will be supporting services and more and more it's going to be critical to actually have identified uh, service owners end to end rather than just inside the agency. So it's going to require real flippin' thinking um, because, uh, you know, up till now everything's sort of been agency focused. But certainly when I did some work on a whole of government perspective a few years ago, it became quite clear that the lack of editorial control across topic was causing all sorts of issues for users who could often get conflicted information on a, on a, on a single topic. So the good news is that this, this leap forward might start to sort some of this out. But it's going to take quite some work behind the scenes um, to get the structures in place that are missing. Let's do that. We've got some great theories so far. <laughs> because, of course, when we start thinking about this, it, I should have actually found a, a messier one, but I'm thinking spaghetti in a lot of the instances here. There's, again, I don't think any of these problems are you know, unachievable, but I think it could become quite messy quite quickly if we're not controlled in this approach that we take. Hence spaghetti. Or that we're not open about it, because I think we can, we can solve a lot of these problems. We've got, we've got the attitude, we've got the right attitude, you know, we believe we can solve things, and that's half the battle. Which, of course, then lends it to, well, if we're sending information one way, well, if we need to cross-pollinate information, that means we need to pull things from other places. We need those controls there, which, of course, then just means more arrows against these things we've got here. Hence the spaghetti. Hence my nightmare. Not yet, but soon. <laughs> so, again, it, it's trying to know who the source is, what's the trusted bit of information, what should be exposed, when should it be exposed, all of those lovely things. And again, goes back to a bit of that stewardship, goes back to that ownership, lots of those sort of points that Sharon was just sort of talking to then. Mm. So this is the sort of thing that we're working through at the moment, um, un trying to understand what we don't yet understand, trying to work out where the gaps are, trying to work out where the gotcha points are going to be when we start doing this. Um, trying to start to pull the community together in small groups to start talking through some of these issues. Um, for us, at the technology side of it, it's fairly simple and not, nothing that we have any particular concerns over. Obviously, we'll have to do the standard government things, take things through um, and you know evaluations and such like, but really it's this that's going to um, consume us, not the technology side. However, there's obviously some benefits and some potential options that come out of that. I'm going to say if we're going to do spaghetti, we could at least sell as a product and hopefully have it a bit controlled when we think about some of those challenges that we face. So to my mind, well, that sounds like it's an improved existing service, even if we're just talking about information that's available. Like I said earlier, previous trademark examiner, and of course, things are shown on business.gov.au. A lot of that has some context missing as to when you should apply for a trademark. Lots of fun things there. Let's not get into the act. Uh, there's too much. Um, but in, in things like that, if we're serving up information there, that's a great thing. That helps both the business, .com .au side, it helps the IP Australia side, 
Five Parts and Titans office. New services, well, if we're just serving our content, well, that's great. Maybe that's a good option for people to be able to build extra tools, build new tools, leverage things we've already got. And then of course, there's also that one where we think about something like content as a service. So what that looks like to be seen. So Scarecat makes an appearance as usual in my presentations. It's daunting when we start to get into this, um, but it's really exciting as well. Like we are really motivated to make this happen. Um, but, you know, we've got some challenges, but we don't feel like we're alone in that. We feel like we've got 105 other agencies all willing us on and all willing to get involved and, and help us work this out. And that's, that's why we're so much stronger because we're all together. Um, so, so no, no, positive. <laughs> no, no, we're running time, time, and of the course, these are the um, text heavy slides that are coming up. Feel free to take photos if you can. Um, big one for me content is still going to be king coming out of all of this stuff. It's always the argument. To me, three big sort of headings there's an ownership problem, a currency problem, and a governance one. And of course, there's a lot of interaction across those. When we think ownership, who manages it, who maintains it, how do you find the owner for it? That's a classic one in government. Teams change, email addresses change. Oh, we don't run that program anymore, but no one can take it down, all of that fun stuff. Uh, love it. The more things change, the more they stay the same, right? Um, currency, is, is it up to date? Big, big one. one. Is, is it accurate? accurate? That's another big one. Uh, and and what's the life cycle? Where, where is it in the life cycle? And then, of course, when we get to governance, what's the review process? If, if I see that that information is wrong and it's being served on a product that I own, what do I do about that? Who, what, what can I do about that, if anything? Um, are there legal problems that potentially expose themselves here? Are there ramifications around that? Um, Legislation is its own nightmare. Can have a lot of good lawyers involved, I see, and that sounds very expensive. <laughs> um, who gets a say? Who actually gets to influence these things? And of course, how are these changes actually communicated? So when do we know that this material has been changed? Who can we validate that against? If there's a big bit of policy shift or government changes always sort of influence those things as well, drives a lot of this stuff. Again, <laughs> time and text. Business challenges, quite a few here. So again, photo still. Confidence in that currency and the source and the targets. Should people be servicing that information? Should those products be able to have that access? How can information be trusted and validated? Goodness gracious me. What happens when material changes, moved or removed? Talking back to that last slide just there. Uh, and of course, um, our pricing is based on traffic. So when we think about the business model that we operate from a cost recovery standpoint as a government agency, if you're exposing all of this information, whether it's an API, whether it's a material, whatever it happens to be, that potentially increases cost. Lots of fun little things to think about there. Technical, I'll just keep punching me there. Can we make sure it's robust, secure, and how can we interconnect into this stuff? Um, if we open this thing from the start, what sort of a mess does that become? That goes back to our spaghetti slide. Probably needs to be that controlled, focused, topic-based, and then build out from there. <clears throat> At least that's the thinking. And of course, technology, great. How much stuff are we then exposing? Um, and of course, what level of granularity do we need? Are we just wanting to serve up a page? Do we need to serve up a paragraph? Do we need to serve up a tiny bit of legislation at a section or subsection or, or a business rule? And security, touching still into that technical space as well. Who should be able to connect to it? Who, who do we give trust in that? Um, you know, are they hitting our services too much? What's the sort of performance on top of security challenges we've got there? Well, what are the appropriate controls? Um, rate limits. I don't want you spending my stuff all day. Um, who's responsible? Yeah. And what does that model look like? You know, how, how do we feel that there's confidence in it? Does it work for our customers? All of those sorts of things. And then, of course, how does everyone connect to that and leverage that properly? There's a few ways to do that. Yeah, so I think we've got questions too because we know that the agencies that use GovCMS um, have relationships with the vendor community, they often have partners in the vendor community. And although we might go and control DXP and service providers around DXP, I know that they're still going to rely quite heavily on those partnerships and relationships they have in the wider Drinkle community. Um, 
particularly where we have integrations um, coming in from the XP to Drupal. So I, I wondered how skilled are the Drupal community in Australasia around these kind of issues? How much experience have you already gained in the private sector's use of these tools? Is it going to be quite easy for us to tap into your by your expertise in this field when we need it, our customers going to be able to. Um, if we do these sprints around the topic, which I think we almost certainly will, um, why is our app thinking we'll just make that available to the agencies around that topic? And then I thought, well, maybe I should ask the question, does, does, is there a wider group of people who will be interested in participating in those little sprints? Um, is there value for the Drupal, wider Drupal community? Would you like to be involved? I don't mean to exclude you by saying that we start in government. I just assume that we would want most to learn. Um, but if you think it would benefit you to observe and participate and to see the kinds of problems that we're having to work through as part of that, you're most welcome to find some way to let me know your views on that. And I think that's it from us. So, I mean, noting time, um, but if you do have questions, we can take some now. Worst case, come and grab us in the hallway and we can also talk to those yeah. things too. We're approachable out there. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, just, so we, just so you know, yeah. <laughs> it's our marketing arm. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll look for the guts in and show them what's really talking about. Okay. Two, two questions, hopefully related. Uh, first question, do you have a solid use case in mind for the cross pollination? And <laughs> second question, what are the thoughts and strategies for longer term um, adoption of the GovCMS platform? I think when we think the topic one, I don't think we have one set in stone at the moment. Cyber security is probably a very good one. Obviously, things such as the change of cyber.gov.au, and of course, the fact that we should be building things securely from the start, as was our keynote yesterday as well. Um, the one that otherwise pops to mind is COVID, and the main reason for that. Health is a customer on our platform, Services Australia is a customer on our platform. And of course, if we think about the, let's say, the life cycle of COVID, we've gone through a fair chunk of it. We've seen what's happened. We've seen how everyone's responded to it. And of course, we've entered a new phase when, of course, they've said they've mentioned the pandemic is over. Um, it's obviously not necessarily as current as it has been, but I think it's also one that impacted so many people. But I think that's an opportunity to go back, reflect on what everyone did, and see how we could do that better. I don't want another pandemic. I'm sure everyone else is in the same boat. <clears throat> but I think that was probably the test case against everything. So I, I think that's probably a good one in my mind. Yeah, in, in context of um, disaster resilience, which probably resonates more from the um, But yeah, also Australia, yeah. over and over again, with bushfires and floods and the last uh, cyclones, um, both countries have to deal with disaster resilience. COVID pandemics is another one. Um, learning our lessons from that. And, and, really taking it back up a little um, really important. Yeah, uh, and I suppose to the second question about growth with the GovCMS community, uh, I think we're at that point where we have this level of organic growth that works well for the fact that we're not mandated at a government level. It's a choice. Um, there's obviously a couple of things that are already in place that work well. We talk about resilience, we talk about uptime, we talk about the work that we did during the pandemic again to make sure that sites like Health or Services Australia were made up. But that's a good use case in its own. It's a great one we get to do our horns about and all those sorts of things. Um, when we think about customers that are already there and they think about new products that are coming online, if they've already got that space there that they're using for other things, they normally look to us as a sort of first case. They can leverage existing arrangements, they can go through those processes, they know the curriculum and all of those sort of things. So a lot of that sort of happens anyway and it's working quite well. When we think about how people come in and reach out for us, a lot of that is that word of mouth or just straight up general cold inquiries that come in the door. I'm in a lot of those conversations and people are looking at us very early. They're looking at us in the discovery phase. Does these things fit? Do they not? Do we need something further down the road? And of course, we have SAS and CAS, so of course, a lot of that initial conversation is against your discovery. Where does that land? Or if you're doing something like a transactional system, that doesn't fit our model anyway. So for a bunch of those, it's a lot of what comes in the door. 
And when I see what's happening anyway, and I've been with the program just nearly three years, I think at the moment that natural growth is working for us, sustaining for us, and making sure that we're paying those things, paying, paying those bills, and being able to then explore stuff like this. I think we get on average have about sixty in the pipeline we raise on the way. That's ones you're an anchor will become. Yeah. Um, and when we've gone over sixty um, at a time, it's put a lot of strain on us. I think sixty is about a good fit for us. You've got to remember that we are public servants first, and we do a lot to encourage consolidation of websites. So often, when someone's coming to us with seven, eight, nine, twelve websites, we see that as an opportunity to influence and to. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many sites we've been party to consolidating and closing, almost as many as we built them. <laughs> so, at this point, um, yeah. Yeah, it's not that the number we have isn't descriptive of how many they started with and how many are now inside these sites. So um, we do have that role as well, which is kind of counterproductive to running a platform, isn't it? But it's just one of those little things about being a public servant. Um, no, I suppose just to close, yeah. to close out. I, well, well, I'll try to get two channel now. Um, the other bit for me is this, this is the reason we're having this conversation. People are looking for this sort of stuff. There's obviously a need for it. There is a growth space when we talk about things like DXP. We have to stay with the time as well. If we're not being active, going along those lines, we'll shoot ourselves in the foot and we will die our own death because we're not being in front of those things. So for us, it's not necessarily chasing, it's going with where we need to go. I'll leave it there because obviously Suchi needs to get us off the stage and kick us out. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Please grab us the hallway. Thank you.